Welcome everyone to Get Your Game On, the channel dedicated to immersive gaming experiences. And today's the day we're finally going to apply the diode fix to my DOF Reality H6 and address what I call a rebounding effect and make this motion on this platform even better than it already is. So, back when we first upgraded the H6 with the SFU gear drives, I immediately noticed an issue with the movement. I was getting this weird feeling like the rig was bottoming out real quick whenever I did certain motions. And again, it was extremely immersion breaking. And we looked into it and finally Klaus Schmidtdinger found the solution. Very, very intelligent gentleman. And he's allowed me to use the video that he, uh, he documented it with. And I'm gonna show you what this problem looks like. It was actually a problem with the MD13S boards that are in the control boxes for the H6. And they have a thing called regenerative braking. And so what happens is whenever they get movement back to them, they basically try to feed the power back to the power supply. The problem with that is the power supply is trying to maintain a solid voltage. And so when it gets that signal or that feedback from the MD13S board, it basically drops the power and that's when you feel that movement. The solution is very simple. You only need a few things. First thing, you need some diodes. And then I went ahead and also got some Wago clamps. This will make the installation that much easier. So um, I'm going to have both of these items listed in the description below if you're interested in ordering them. These diodes are basically 30 amp. 50 volt diodes and they work like a charm. So let's talk a little bit now about how to actually install the diode fix. Now I'm going to put Klaus's original post down in the description below if you want to see a step-by-step -step detailed instruction on how to accomplish this mod. Um, I will caution you, please only attempt this mod if you're comfortable working with electronics. Again, you're dealing with electricity, you're dealing with sensitive electronic components. So if you're not comfortable with it, find somebody to do this for you who is. So without further ado, let's get into how to mod your control boxes. Okay, so here we have our DOF Reality Box. It's all unplugged, removed from the system so we can use it. And what we're going to do to open it is you're going to see there are these four screws on the side and then you got three on the bottom. So you've got a total of seven little screws that you're going to want to remove. And you're going to do that on both sides so you got another seven here those are the only ones you need to do to remove the cover and you will note if you look at the cover the front of the cover does have a slight angle cut so when you put it back make sure you put it on with the angles towards the front so that's the important part and uh, it's a small allen head and you're going to use that to open it up Okay, so here we have the control box. We've opened it up and always make sure that it's unplugged before you ever open this thing. Uh, you don't want to run any risk of electrical issues or hurting yourself or anything like that. So what we've got is we've got these diodes and these are 30 amp, 50 volt diodes. Um, I'll have a link in the description if you're interested in getting the ones I got. And the most important thing about these is to recognize this silver stripe up here. So this needs to go towards the green block on the circuit board. So this is the part, they are not bi-directional. You need to make sure this silver line goes into this green block. So in my opinion, the best way to do that is you just put my bend in for attaching it. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put a bend in here and that way I know that's the part that I'm going to be putting into the block. Now, what I want to use are these clips. So you see we've got these clips here. And these are what I'm going to use to attach it. So what we're going to do is we've bent our diode. And we're going to size it here in a minute. But what we're going to start with is we're going to unscrew. All right, so we unscrew the red power to the green block. So 
we got that loose and this is where the diode is going to go between. So it's going to go between this red wire that we just pulled out. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fish it. You could, you could always pop these um, wire ties if you want. I thought about it, but I think I can fish these out, so I'm not worried about it. I've got plenty, but um, again, it's just one more step if I can avoid it. Makes it easier to just do it this way. So I'm going to pull this out from behind the block. And there she goes. And so my idea, my idea is that I'm going to kind of take advantage of the fact that this has already been sitting here like this. And so what I plan to do is take again, make sure your line is going towards the green block. And let's see, so I can see that this does not, it does not need to go down very far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it. So I'm going to guesstimate here, probably about there. All right, let's see how that does. So if I put that in there now, nice. That goes nice and in there. Yep, perfect. And that way I'm limiting the amount of leg or metal uh, part that's showing and has possibility to connect with any other metal pieces and short anything out. If you have to do something creative, like if there's a different design on these boxes and you're going to be having to kind of have a long leg on there, I'd recommend using some heat shrink. Um, put heat shrink on the part that's going to be exposed and then obviously you don't have the heat shrink you know, on the part that connects. But if you're going to have to keep the legs longer to run it between things, think about using some heat shrink. I don't think I need any because this is going to be pretty short. And so the other part of this is I'm going to use these little Wago clamps. And again, all this is in the description if you want to use the same stuff I'm using. But really, anything that makes the connection counts. So same thing. I want to maximize the space savings. So what I'm going to do is, okay, it's about that short. So I'm going to, again, guesstimate and always keep track of where these go. You don't want them flying into your circuitry there. So always kind of keep track of that. So I know that was roughly, I'm going to say about there. Okay. So now let's see how close we got. I think we got pretty good. I can see, yep, it looks like that's just about where I wanted it. So put that in there. And again, I know it's secure because I can't pull it out. So we're, we're solid. I can see it clipped here. So that's good. And then all we're going to do is take um, this red wire. Actually, I'm going to put it in the, in the slot first. Let's see. I go there. It might be easier to add this wire first. In fact, because that wire is sitting that way, I'm actually going to switch this. So I'm going to put this one over here. Okay. Yeah, that makes more sense. So we got that there. And then I should be able to just slide this down in here. So we can be sure that I got a good clamp. So you can see it's solid. Can't pull it off. Again, just as a final check, I've got my silver stripe and it's going against the green block. So then all we got to do is put that down in there and tighten it up. And that is all you need to do to do this mod. And what I don't like, I would like that to be a little straighter just because of my OCD. And that's going to clear. So that should clear the housing. So that should work out very nicely. So now let's just do that for the other two on this and then the other box and I'm good. So that's what you do to modify your... Uh, your diodes.
So I have to tell you, I've been using the motion platform with this diode fix in place for the last few days and the motion is even better than it was before. That uh, rebounding effect is completely gone. I haven't experienced it a single time. The simulator is running tremendously well. The motion is smooth and it just makes me love this rig even more. So if you're encountering this rebounding effect, do the fix. It will take care of it and you'll be set. Now, I did speak with DOF Reality and they said that this fix has been implemented since August of this year. So if you uh, have a newer system or you're looking at purchasing a new DOF Reality system, this is not an issue. But if you've got an older system like mine and you're encountering this rebounding effect, this is how you take care of it. Now, if you have the original really old systems, the really old DOF Reality rigs um, that have the old worm gears and uh, the original levers, this fix is not needed for them. This only became an issue when we upgraded to the SFU gear drive boxes. So uh, hopefully that helps some of you out there. And it's funny after I started using it and after I fixed it, I realized there may be a few of you out there that may have been confusing this rebounding effect with the notorious cogging that we've been talking about on the channel forever. So the way you can tell the difference is if it's happening when you're moving very fast, when you're doing quick motions and you feel something that feels out of place, that's likely the rebounding effect that this fix will improve. If, however, it's happening when you're doing very gradual turns in an aircraft and really slow movements, that's the notorious cogging problem that is now fixed through DOF's no cog reducer gearboxes that the newer units have the option to get. So hopefully this will help some of you. I absolutely love, love, love using my H6 and I can't believe the improvement. I wish I would have done this mod a long time ago, but at least it's done now. So hopefully this will help some of you out there. So that's what I have for you today. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. I appreciate it. Make sure you like and subscribe. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget we have that super thanks button down there. That really helps the channel out. So until next time, remember to get your game on.